Hey everybody, my name is Matt Grudwell. Welcome to Wood Chat on Air for December 12th, 2012. It's the day of 12s. You can find me on the internet at uppercutwoodworks.com and on Twitter at uppercutwood. Uh, tonight's topic is how are your holiday projects going and what are your holiday projects? Uh, with me tonight is, of course, Mr. Chris Wong. Chris? Hello, everybody. I am Chris Wong. <laughs> uh, great sound effects. Thanks, Scott. Um, Chris Wong of uh, Flare Woodworks. You can find me at flarewoodworks.com and on Twitter at flarewoodworks. In the little box to my outside is Mr. Scott Meek. Hey, guys. Scott Meek. You can find me at scottmeekwoodworks.com. Are you on Twitter? Oh, yes, on Twitter. Uh, S. Meek Woodworks. Cool. And with us tonight also is Major Vic Hubbard. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're going to get, get burned up by now. But anyway, uh, yeah, but Tumblewood works, uh, or Tumblewood Creations, however you want to go with it. Uh, Tumblewood on Twitter. Cool. All right, so um, tonight's topic is what are your holiday projects and, and how are they going? But first, let's talk about um, has anybody done any woodworking? Ooh, Vic's got a beer. Has anybody done any woodworking in the last couple of weeks that wasn't related to holiday projects or have any cool links to share or books to share or anything? Uh, I was building planes the last couple of weeks or a few weeks, and that counts. Cool. Count, that counts to me. That's for time work, yeah. cool works, right? Yeah, that's right, uh, the molding planes. Cool. What about you, you guys, uh, Scott and Vic? Uh, um, make them uh, – go ahead, Vic. Well, he, he Scott's working. <laughs> He's making planes, man. <laughs> making planes, and actually tonight I had my uh, first class um, teaching how to make wood planes online. So, how did that go? Well, yeah. went, went good. Went good. Um, at least from my perspective, uh, as, as good as first uh, first go around can. And, so I'm I'm doing two different classes as first test run. Uh, everyone in Senate got a 50% discount on the price because it's going to be a little up in the air. Um, but yeah, I think it went good, and I learned a lot. I hope the guys learned a lot too. So you I learned a lot about what I'm doing. You having good uh, um, technical experience? Yeah, um, it went good. I I was running a bunch of tests on my end because. Got the computer upstairs and computer in my shop, so I was running back and forth the last couple of days, just making sure what worked, and made myself a little jig for the camera to sit on, so I could look down on my bench while I was working, and uh, I think it went pretty good. So, what technology do you use for the class? Is it just a Google uh, Hangout or Google Hangout? Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and well, it's kind of nice is with the Google Drive inter uh, integration. Um, all the information for the class is uploaded to Google Drive, all the drawings and, and anything that's relevant to it. So we can check that right in the, in the class, and I can pull up drawings. and um, We keep in touch through Google Plus and through email, and it, it works good. So. That's cool. That's very cool. How long was your seminar or your, your class? Uh, tonight was about an hour and 45 minutes, I think. Wow, and you uh, covered the entire process. No, 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 no. This will be a oh. uh, three sessions at, at least oh, okay. class. So, mm, yeah. okay. Yeah, That's this cool. is just the first session of class one. So, right on. I'm trying what to find is the, the point? The Are you making a, a little block plane or a smoother? Or? Uh, we'll be making a smoother. Very cool. Uh, basically, we're starting with a twelve-inch plank, and they can make it whatever their size they want cool. from there. So. Um, is the is the format that they they pay you and you send them a certain amount of material in the mail, like a kit or a blade or a pattern, and then they participate in the online class, or do they get all those things themselves? Um, I give them a material list, and uh, I just put a link in the chat here for the classes. Um, I give them a material list and a plain a blade size, and then we um, 
we go from there. The, the link that I just posted has a link to the material list and how to sign up to know about future classes as well. Cool. I just shared the uh, I just shared the link with the with the um, Twitter chat. Um, yeah, you beat me to it. <laughs> sorry, Chris. <laughs> uh, Vic, what's up with uh, what's up with you? What have you been working on? Uh, well, I uh, um, you know I took a class uh, this last year with Seth Rowland uh, over at the Port Townsend School of Woodworking, and um, you know that's kind of the direction I want to go is bending. Um, so one of the things that I did is I uh, built a, a hot pipe bending rig. Um, you know, that you like luthiers use for uh, uh, doing the sides and stuff, you know, just to use the hot pipe and soak in the wood. Um, and to play with it, um, you know, I had some uh, um, Russian olive. You, and you, you know Russian olive, right, Matt? It's not something I, I don't think it's, I don't know how, how it's, it's prevalent a lot here, you know, but I don't know what it's like it's over got a, It's got a, got a lot of green in it. It's really light green as far as the... Uh, yeah. Leaves and it has a very very pungent odor to it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, this is that. That's what this this the this wood is. A buddy of mine had cut down some, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, why don't you saw it up?" Because the end of it actually looks like deep dark chocolate, um, and the 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 spoons are turning a nice nice color. So, um, really happy with the look of the wood. But I, yeah, it's a nasty wood. Most people don't like it. It's got uh, the they have some really spikes on the tree, you know. Um, like big thorns, and uh, uh, and then it's high allergy content thing. So most people don't like it. But um, I figured, yeah, well, I was you know figuring out how the hot pipe bending works, and you know what my limitations are to deal with and stuff, and I uh, figured I might as well do something. So I decided to make a bunch of uh, salad spoons for people um, for Christmas. I figured since nice. I was doing it, so I wasn't actually doing it for Christmas because I don't really get into Christmas that much, but. Um, and then, and then uh, we used a Sensio coffee machine for like for a long time. About one at work still, but um, nobody's carrying this uh, the filters anymore, or the little packets anymore. So I don't like Keurig because it's like all this plastic. It's going to go in a landfill. So I just I said uh, um, go back to regular coffee, which is drip. So I got um, just a small coffee maker, and so it's like the number two uh, filters, and that's what. This is supposed to be more. So, my my wife saw that in your spoons, Vic, and she loved them. The spoons are really. I get a lot more comments and and oohs and ahs on the spoons, which kind of surprises me. But you know, I guess uh, art uh, art deco is not everybody's thing. So, yeah, my my, my wife liked both of them, so Sweet. I might have to uh, pirate some of your your designs. If... <laughs> oh, yeah, feel free. I mean. It's, it's uh, uh like, you know kind of sketch stuff you know. Is that your your rig that Chris is showing there? Uh, I guess it's just a picture off the web here. If you, if you want to have a look at this here. So you've got a, a propane torch here that runs up and feeds the flame into this iron pipe here, and the pipe gets hot. The wood is uh, soaked in water, so um, the heat from the pipe turns the moisture in the wood into steam. And it softens the lignin and makes the wood pliable. Yep. And uh, you can get uh, um, plumbers use a, a fabric that they put behind pipes uh, when they're um, up in joists and stuff, uh, keep thing, things from right. burning. And uh, you can get that at like Lowe's or uh, you know any hardware store. And uh, it's just a felt ring that goes in between the um, the flange and the uh, the wood. Uh, mine actually, you know, I, I got I, I use some plywood I have. I, I, let me grab. Yeah, that's of course to keep uh, the hot metal pipe. This section here, the pipe and the flange from um, burning the wood, because of course it gets very hot with the flame. You can also use fiberglass insulation. Yeah. So well, I was, uh, can you just use an of glove? <laughs> So this this is what mine is. It's like uh, I had some a uh, buddy of mine uh, gave me some plywood that was actually the uh, sides of a waterbed, you know. So it's like an inch and a an inch and an eighth plywood, and, and I just got a flange on it. Make sure you burn the pipe off outside, because it's, it's <laughs> because the black pipe is really. I mean, when it starts smoking, it smokes a lot before it. It smells uh, pretty. 
Yeah. So, uh, um, and I wasn't able to find a black pipe uh, flange, so I just went with a um, a galvy and and with it, and just hoping that it wasn't going to get hot enough to actually start fuming, because I don't want to deal with uh, galvy fumes. Um, and it's it's been fine actually. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then, you want to use black pipe uh, instead of. Yeah, but I mean, I was worried about using it on the flange because normally um, you should use black pipe, but the thing is, it's it's harder to find a black pipe flange. So oh, I just okay. got that. I did that. And then uh, the, the coolest thing, and I think if anybody's uh, seen the uh, oh, the Michael Fortune, uh, the, some of the Michael Fortune uh, articles in fine woodworking, he uses one of these. Um, and it's just a, a, it's for sheet metal work, but it's it's great for grabbing stuff, you know. And then uh, I was talking to uh, uh, Todd Butler today, and uh, he gave me a, a, a site for actually the ba a, a nice back strap, so I can get a I think a two inch and a four inch uh, back strap, which is basically a compression strap to keep things from blowing out so much on the outside um, of the curves. So nice it works. Story. It's it's a lot of fun. I like bending. I've got uh, you know I've got my I just recently finished uh, a bunch of upgrades in my shop, um, and uh, uh, so I have an outfeed table that I'm gonna you know I got to do some uh, holes in it to put dog holes for uh, doing bending. So that'll be for steam bending, and then I also have uh, uh, you know it's it's a nice big place where I can um, work on a bunch of other stuff. So. Um, and then, you know, Chris, I got that tucker vise. I decided I'm going to put it on the end of the bench over there, um, the opposite side of it from the uh, um, the leg vise. Um, I'm loving this bench. Every time, I, every time I turn around, there's a reason why I clamp something up in the bench, and it's just nice to have it. But I really want to get that tucker vise going because it'll clamp anything in any weird position. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's cool. what I'm doing. There was a question in the chat room about um, the Russian olive, uh, whether it's food safe. The Russian olive? It's wood. I believe that's what that question was about. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't eat the wood, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's just like any other wood. It's not, it's not like a, a toxic wood. I guess it, maybe that's what they're talking about, like if... Uh, some people, well, I don't know. Some people, I'm I'm a little bit allergic to uh, the walnut, but uh, I wouldn't have a problem with that in wood either. Everything's coated with shellac, you know. <laughs> and, um, you know the the chocolate. Right. So uh, once factory, you finish it, yeah, chocolate factories use shellac. So I mean, on, on, yeah. on the chocolate to make it. Shellac is what's powder. used on jelly beans and on um, time release medicine. It's just powder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and it, it's food safe. Um, I, I like I, to drink it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't want to drink it, but you know. <laughs> but, uh, well, uh, that will... And then these, you know, basically, I'm giving them to people, and I'm like, you know, hey, you know, use them. Um, they're, you know, they were just an experiment, and, and it just happened to be I was doing it around Christmas, so, you know, um, I was able to, you know, at least come up with something that maybe these are useful to some people while I'm instead of just you know, creating scrap wood. So um, I was like, use them, you know, and, and uh, if they break or whatever, or, or dry out or crack or whatever, you know, even if you want to put them through the dishwasher, hell, I don't care. Um, I'm not going to, you know, have my family. I want them to use them, and, and uh, if they, they work out good. I, I, I quarter saw the, the logs, so I mean, all my all my stuff is, you know, nice straight grain and quarter saw because I knew I had to, you know, that's a thing with the, the bending, you know. If you got any weird, <coughs> it just wants to tear out of that grain. So uh, you got to kind of stay with uh, straight grain stuff. So. Cool. Well, I did some lame uh, woodworking a week ago. Um, my wife and I got a new mattress for um, for Christmas. Is this going to be too much information thing? No, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. I could go there, but I won't, Vic. I'll do, I'll do that next time we have a beer together. Right. And I didn't want to pay. We have a king bed, <laughs> and I didn't want to pay the $400 for the box springs because they're just a ripoff. 
So instead, I um, bought forty dollars worth of two by sixes, and um, basically turned my sleigh bed into a platform bed where you don't need a box frame, but you can't you can't tell because of the frame I built. I basically built a you know a flooring system inside the inside the sleigh bed and right. put uh, two sheets of plywood down. It was much cheaper than box springs, and it's much much flatter because in the past when we had the box springs underneath our king mattress, because they make you get two twin size box springs essentially, you end up it's like you're sleeping in two canoes. If you look if you looked at the bed from the end, it, it would go like this. Where yeah. here's the outside edges of the box springs, then they sag, and then when they come up to the seam in the middle, right. so you try and go to roll over, and it's like you. You're always rolling uphill, so that was my lane woodworking. And then the other thing I've been doing is, um, I can't remember who it was at Woodchat a couple weeks ago recommended this book. I think it was Beth, um, The Old Way of Seeing. Hmm. Have you guys heard of this book? I haven't heard of it. So I'm only, I don't know, 40 pages in, but so far it's great. Um, and it's about architecture and design and I'm really liking it right now so I'll put the link to the chat room in the link in the chat room <laughs> yeah I'll check out. Mark Cherry clarified uh, or at uh, Witch Shaver uh, 101 uh, he clarified what he was talking about with uh, um, is it safe uh, he said uh, you you can't be used as a vessel because it actually leaches uh, um, it's got poison that leaches toxins into the toxins. water. Toxins. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So I will look at that because uh, you know I don't want to really like <laughs> here. <laughs> you, you, it, it'll change who you give them to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That'll still yeah. be Christmas. It'll just be the it'll be the white elephant Christmas. Yeah. When you get the poisonous wood, Nick, you gotta carve little apples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, dude. So I suggest I suggest that if you're interested in taking your design skills up or understanding um, a little bit more of forms and geometry and order, take a look at that book, The Old Way of Seeing. It's it's pretty good. I posted a link uh, on Amazon. Um, it's a lot about architecture, but all of those things do apply to um, furniture design as well. Um, but it's it's just it's pretty cool. I gotta show one picture in here if I can find it. This old where's this old church picture in Wyoming? I was surprised that the guy used an old church in Wyoming is We had David Dolfman with us, but uh, now he's gone. Again. Yeah, he's gonna share a project. I think he's I think Google is probably installing their um, plug in right now on him. So we can do the chat. Oh, where? Ah. All right, I'll have to find that. Anyway, okay. So, what are you guys making for Christmas for people, or are you, or or the winter holidays, or just out of the goodness of your heart? Chris, are you making any gifts? Um, I am. I am making one thing that I can't say right now because someone might hear it. Uh. And then I'm making something else which I haven't decided yet. And I'm making one other thing that I can't say. <laughs> I guess I can put it to Twitter here. Nobody will know. Well, I know one thing's for your brother because he's hard to hard to make, and you, and you say you make him. Oh yeah. 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 So, I'm, I'm making is, all the chance all he's actually watching? No. No. <laughs> Chris, I'm honored that you're going to make something for me, but you really don't have to, man. It's all right. Okay, I won't. Don't worry. Where's <laughs> <laughs> the laughter, Scott? Where's the... the... Is, my, is that new ball plane uh, what, what you're getting me, Scott? <laughs> Which plane? The little block. <laughs> I've heard Shannon talk about his. I'm really tempted to... to um... Uh, oh. I, I get along with my block plane, but I've, I've I've heard really good stuff about your block plane, and plus I know your how your smoother works. So that's the resin yeah. one, right? Um, there's a uh, Osage uh, block plane that is ready to ship right now. 
on the oh, website. Yeah. <laughs> just, to, just to dangle the carrot a little bit. Yeah. I'm actually picking up a, a router. Uh, um, I'm getting a Festool OF uh, 1400. So nice. that's my, that's my nice. big chunk out of my pocket right now. And that's Merry I, Christmas to me. <laughs> I, like, I like my 1400. Yeah, well, yeah. I, need, I need something because you guys know how anal I am about dust. Um, and uh, I built a really nice boom arm over the table. Um, so I don't know if you've really seen it yet. <laughs> Can you guys see that? It's good. Uh, <coughs> so it's got a big boom arm on over there, and so it's uh, got a blast gate over there. Really easy to to run pipe, and I can you know use my domino, everything that I need to collect dust on, like sanders and stuff like that, all over there. Um, you know, I've I've really segregated my shop to power tool crap that creates dust versus crap cre that creates uh, shavings, you know? So uh, um, it's it's more tolerable over here than, than over there if, if I uh, go too far. Everybody thinks I, they laugh when I say it's messy, but, you know, um, it bugs me. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you get all that stuff up off the floor, Vic, that... Uh... Foam sealant stuff. Did you get that up off the floor? Foam sealant. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, I uh, yeah. Um, just wiped it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah anybody see that? It was like a one part uh, of a two part system, so it didn't bind to the floor. It just was nasty as far as goo. So. Anybody see uh, Chris's shop the other day? The picture he posted. Of <laughs> yeah, I still have hives from that. <laughs> Yeah, every single horizontal surface was covered. Chris, that, that picture made me feel so much better. <laughs> Thank you for posting yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Add stacks of wood on the floor and then a scroll saw on top of the stack of wood and then boxes on top of the scroll saw and then tools on top of the boxes. and Yeah. yeah. Um, I cleaned Did it up. Did you see his rebuttal there. video to the fine woodworking how to set up a premium hand plane? I haven't watched it yet. He basically said, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you that they tell you that to do, which you would do if you got yourself an old Stanley at a flea market, but don't do it to a premium hand plane because you'll probably just screw things up. Mm. And here's what you really need to do. <laughs> and he actually calls out fine woodworking. He, he introduces himself as a guy who worked at Popular Woodworking for years, and then he says, uh, hey, you might have seen a fine woodworking video where they tell you this stuff. They're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was great. He says, "If you know, when you buy a premium hand plane, if it if it needs more than what I show you out of the box, send it back." <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't need our anything. So, yeah, that's fine. I'll have to check that out. And where is that at? Oh, it was just in his YouTube Lost Art Press channel. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I like what. So, uh, so that one didn't make it to the, the Pop Wood blog, then. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I like what Mark wrote. Uh, a messy shop is a money-making shop. Yeah. To a point. Very true. Well, to my point, shop yeah. is messy. Yeah. My shop's messy, and it's not making it. Any a disorganized <laughs> shop is not a good shop to be in. No. Yeah. It can and be it's messy. Not safe. But it can be messy, but it cannot be disorganized. There is definitely a difference. Yeah. Definitely yeah. It's it's also not safe, right? Yeah. Well, for me, you know, if I get too much, because uh, um, I have the wood floors and you know, it's got like a uh, oil poly on top of it. If if uh, you know if I get too much um, uh, dust on the floor, it gets slip, slip, slippery. So you know, I need to wash that anyway. So. Well, Anna, I just, you know, I, I don't really ever get dust. Is that just me or is that everybody? What? What? What's what? happened, Scott? What's going on, Scott? Uh, I think my signal is going screwy. It's back. Oh, there you go. Back, though. Okay. There you go. But, uh, Never mind. What is that? I don't know. 
Oh, you know who I so would like to ask? What, what is Mark, what is Mark uh, Cherry working on right now? Mr. I'm sure he's Woods working on some big conference table. Here, I'm going to show you guys some... Um, I'm going to put these in the screen share. I've got some uh, shaker tables that Andy Brownell, um, he's at Alan Warb, he's made. Let me take a look at these. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. I got a question for everybody. I love that, you know. Those are pretty nice. I mean, it's obviously the same table with the different, different proportions. Um, yeah. They look good. They look really good. Matt, click on your screen so that it holds the tables in frame instead of going back to Vic and Scott and myself. I thought I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, it's it's stuck up. Oh, there. that's you have to do that on your side, I think. Oh, okay. All right, sure. Unless it's doing it in the broadcast as well, but I don't. I'm not sure it is. It'll follow whatever you're doing. So it's okay. Yeah. You got it. Side note, how do you get it to not stick on that? Right click. Uh, um, I was trying to figure I that click, out. I click it again. Okay. It wasn't working for me earlier. Do you guys remember, uh, like, uh, when Mark had the, uh, uh, what was it, shaker table in his, uh, uh, the guild? Shaker table? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Well, see, yeah. this, this is what I, I had started. So I've got the legs and I got the apron. So I've got the uh, legs out of uh, uh, cherry here, and then I did a, a pinstripe up the side with uh, mahogany. Well, it's actually sapelli, and then uh, same down here. Um, and then you know, so that's good. then that's supposed to be tapered, you know. So I've got you know uh, for that thing. So basically, it's a little shaker table, but I'm I'm doing a little more contemporary twist on it. So I'm. Uh, I don't have enough cherry to actually do the top and cherries, so I'm just kind of taking, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, not advice so much, but uh, suggestions on on what I should do for a top. Darker. Hmm. Well, yeah, darker. I don't think I don't think black walnut would go good with it, honestly, because uh, you know, yeah, I don't. I don't think that would go. You know, who are the aprons? The aprons are uh, um, the same cherry, and it's it's a really red, colorful uh, cherry. Um, it's it has not mellowed in age. I haven't sun uh, haven't given a sun uh, tan or not anything yet, but um, it is not going as as dark red as most cherry does. I've had the stuff for quite a few. Well, a couple of years now, and it's it's still this color. So why why do you not want to go with cherry? Um, well, I I think if I went with cherry, it's going to be hard for me to find a find cherry in this particular tone gotcha. uh, because it's a very this is a very light cherry, and it's actually very uh, uh, was it variegated? I think in terms of um, there's a big difference between the uh, winter growth and summer growth. Um, yeah. In terms of the the color, um, and yeah, it'll probably you know mellow with age, but right now it's it's pretty dramatic. Uh, and like I said, it's been sitting in my shop for a couple of years, so it's had exposure. It just hasn't had directly sunlight exposure. Yeah, so. I think if you can't find cherry that'll match, if you could find the cherry that'll match, I'd go with the cherry. But if not, maybe go with I get more mahogany. To match the accents yeah. we already have on it. Well, yeah. Because it would be darker. I've got Sapili. I, I just, I kind of want, I would want the top to be, you know, a little bit more, um, I have some more interest to it than, um, unless unless I was going with a figure piece of uh, uh, that. I do have cherry. I've got bought, bought some boards from uh, Shannon um, at, uh, oh God, uh, McElvain. Uh, yeah. You could also go with like a waterfall bubinga. Might have to be hot. Well, the thing is, you know, this is you know, I think uh, you know, every once in a while you talk about when you you're working on something and you just kind of lost your, you know, it's like it's like eh, you know, you're going along and it's like eh, it's kind of you want to just abandon it. So th those have been sitting there because. Shaker doesn't do anything for me, 
So um, even though I kind of jazzed up the um, uh, the legs a little bit, you know, um, it's just yeah, I get bored with with just straight shapes and stuff. So I'll, I'll make it. I wouldn't make it a deal. Top though. So what? Go ahead, Scott. I was saying, I'll make you a deal. If you don't want to use those legs, just send them to me, Vic. <laughs> and Vic, I, I, would say, I wouldn't go with a, I wouldn't go with a top that's lighter in tone. No, I wouldn't. No. Oh. Um, um, well, maybe you could. I think it would look it have to be really, 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 really white, though, like um, yeah. like uh, birch or holly or really the like Eastern maple. And if you did, it would have to be very visually interesting. It couldn't just be straight grain, right? Mm -hmm. I would do if, I, if you went with a lighter top. I would do something that had lots and lots of visual interest. Yeah, yeah. And my um, autofocus is awesome. Well, hey, I have um, really <laughs> uh, maple. This is got just like grain like crazy in it. But that might be I, it. I don't. The thing is, I I, I have other stuff I want to use that maple for. I've got some designs of that I want to plan. Well, you know, because I'm. This kind of gives you gives me a. Um, one of the things I was like liking about this is that, um, like, there's been a couple of things that I, I um, I've got a guy here that I want to see how he does with upholstery, because um, one of the kind of things that's been knocking around in my head is a, a chair. Where it's like probably like a black walnut or a darker wood. Um, and then this would be an inset panel. So instead of being on the flush like that, it would still protrude, but it would be uh, actually inset into the into the leg. So um, so the grain would have to run in the same direction, et cetera, um, and it wouldn't be that fixed. So I mean, I don't want to have anything that's going like, to push on the um, the substrate to where it's going to break it because it's going to be you know wood on wood in terms of you know, how it's glued like that. Right. So it's a thick veneer, so I think I think an eighth of an inch is about as much as I can go, and then maybe have it protrude, uh, you know, like a sixteenth or a little less. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. So you know, look looking at it for panels, and then um, uh, there was a wood, fine woodworking article. Um, the guy, uh, I think it was fine woodworking. Guy's done curve bending uh, um, and also uh, tapered curve bends. You see that in the master's class in uh, fine woodworking this month? I didn't see that, no. Yeah, and uh, that's what I'm kind of, um, that's kind of helped me figure out some stuff for that uh, hall table that I've been working on, too. So we have a collection of, um, we have a collection of uh, projects that people put in the chat room. Um, Chris has got those. He's gonna we're gonna put those up in the screen share so okay. we can get into the uh, into the video stream. Um, and yeah. Chris says he's got those links ready. So yeah. Chris, why don't you uh, go through kind of the gallery here? Okay. Before I get there, um, Mark Cherry had uh, mentioned uh, that uh, lye will turn uh, cherry to turn uh, deep red. Lye. Okay. Lye. Uh, they're all lies. Okay. They're all lies. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. I I, I held back, Scott. <laughs> okay, so we've got a couple pens here from, um, from David, and maybe David, you can tell us a bit about these. I missed uh, the details that there were. Oh, those are pretty. Well. Here we go. Uh, Mahogany. Or David Barden. Uh, no, David Olschmidt. Olschmidt, okay. So, what what was it? These these are mahogany, and um, I'm not sure about the banding here. Maybe uh, David, you can fill us in on that. I'm gonna guess. I'm guessing uh, maple. maple and maple and maybe walnut. Anyhow, he's got the streamlined kit there. Nice shape to the barrel. I like that. I like that too. That is really pretty. I bet that'd feel good in your hand. There's some cool luminescence going on in that wood too. Nice Very polish. Nice. Yeah. Um, the next pen. This is a really cool mechanism. Um, this is a bolt action pen, which, funny enough, I was I heard about a bolt action pen just three hours ago. I was talking to someone at Lee Valley there where I was working, and he was talking with the.
I want one of those. Uh, you can get the hardware from Penn State. Um, I don't turn pen, I don't turn anything. So, well, well. anyone that wants to make me one and send me one for Christmas, I, I will take. There one. you go. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll also notice there's a, a special shape to the pen itself. You've got uh, looks like um, bullet. Help me out with the term here. Uh, the jacket and the bullet. Yeah. 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 Jacket and the bullet. That's there we why go. I want one. Yeah. Ditto. Nice, nice, nicely done, David. Love it. Well done, David. Yeah. And and if you need a bullet to make a pen out of, I can send you a bullet. That was for David. We live in Washington. We we defend ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, our next picture here is from NC Woodshop. Uh, Sam Watts, and uh, these are some of the pens as well as the uh, cutting board created by uh, one of the members. That is a bright green pen. The woods too well. This, you know, there's some acetates in here. Can you zoom? What are they? Acrylics or acid? What's an acetate? This is this is. Fuzz. I can I can do this a bit. Acetate is a form of a kind of plastic. Okay. So there's like a, a like a resin. That's all I can do there. Yeah. yeah I think bar. They can do some cool stuff with that. Goes to a high polish. And looks like a maple and purple heart uh, cutting board. Nice contrast there. <laughs> okay. Um, this was a link that was sent. I can't. I. I don't know the story behind this link, but um, we have got uh, Adirondack chairs made from water skis. Oh, cool. Which is a pretty funky nice. idea. Um, I've seen them done by, with hockey sticks, but the water skis is a, a nice twist. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen also uh, sure. Here, here. skateboards. Uh, long <coughs> skateboards. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually, that's something I, I want to build uh, um, this year. A uh, couple of them for um, at work. We do a thing with. Uh, it's called Electrothon in uh, America. It's and it teaches uh, high school students about engineering and, and electric vehicles and stuff. And it's a race, actually a race course. And we sponsor one of the races, and we can never do lap money. So we always do like you know we go around and bug shucks and everybody else get as much as we can for you know um, you know prizes to to raffle off for these kids and uh, anyway I want to make a couple of longboards this year since I've got the vacuum press so I'm excited to try that. Cool. cool. So yes, Chris, you said. Uh, mm -hmm. Chris, you said Adirondack chairs made out of hockey sticks. Is that a big thing in Canada, yeah. just making things out of hockey sticks? Well, everything hockey. Um, <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I actually don't see it too much. I think you got a market there, I think man. Kinda, <laughs> yeah, um, it's kind of dwindling. No one, no one uses wooden hockey sticks anymore. Everyone uses uh, uh, carbon. Uh, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen a lot of stuff built out of um, skis. Uh, there's a great restaurant in Wenatchee, Washington that has a bunch of stuff made out of skis. So do skiers look at that the same way we look at, like, an old Diston stuck on the wall with a painting on it? Uh, Whose is this? I don't this know. This is Doug, Doug McPherson. Oh, Doug. He had to, oh. he had okay, to duck out early, but... Are the, uh, uh, are the French, are the, are the front of the doors, uh, um, like, uh, like, you know, rounded? Yeah. It looks like it, yeah. Yes, they are. Oh, sweet. Uh, I, have to, our I, have, I haven't seen him tweet about that. Um, I, I think I found it first on, uh, yeah, it looks like a walnut and, I don't know, walnut and maple would be my guess, but. Yeah, that would be mine. Um, okay, the I'm talking to Twitter right, right now so you can pull it up and look at it. Are you doing a little bit of clap left stuff? Pull it up it's on your screen. Yeah. Yeah. I really like the shape, the radius on the front of the drawers. It's nice. 
Yeah, that's really that's. I'm a not nice sure top. if he has one more drawer at the top that needs to pull. Yeah. I think that's just. So a, that's a, a junior case. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. A little bit of greeny green influence to it. Mm -hmm. And he carried that. I think I'll have to pedestal. steal the shape for the drawers. Yeah. He carried the cloud lift into the that's pedestal. That was really bottom. nice. That's a nice touch. Yeah, I like yeah. that piece. That is very cool. Okay, let's see what we have next. Okay, we're at uh, Dave Dave Bar uh, Dave Barton, I believe. We David Barton, right? So these are uh, music books that he made for his wife. So um, oh, we had a question from Adam Wheel about. Question from Adam Wheel back to the last one about uh, the cabinet here, whether it opens up on the sides. And I don't think it does open on the sides, although although there is a lot of wasted space there that could be hollow. It could be a secret compartment, maybe. Yeah. It looks to it looks to me like those. It might be like a slide out. Those columns on the side, because uh, if you yeah. look at the bottom, it looks like they're. Uh, there's a, a shadow line there. Shadow line. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think you might be right on that because uh, I'm I'm guessing that these are for like maybe it's a door. Stuff. And you pull this or, out, or, it's probably got like uh, um, you know. Yeah, the same yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do. I do see a seam right next to the drawers as well. Yeah. Uh, more distinctly on the far side, actually. It, and it's it's even on the bottom on both sides here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that, probably two doors. Good. Good eye. Good eye, Adam. Okay, let's go back cool. to uh, to David's uh, books here. David, maybe you can tell us a bit about these this uh, these books. I'll read what I can here. Can you switch? Yeah, there you go. So I'm going to drop the link into Twitter here, so you can pull it up uh, yourself if you'd like to see it a little bit bigger. That that wood grain makes me think this. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. So I like that. He, yeah. So he popped the grain using uh, stain and then uh, boiled, boiled linseed oil and teak oil, uh, sealed with blonde shellac with uh, French polish application method. Wow. French polish. Very, very that's, cool. That's, that's well, flavor man. That is, you know, um, I know Mark teaches, you know, to put a little bit of, I think, to put a little bit of dye, but honestly, for me, when it comes to, like, figured wood like that, I think you cannot do it enough justice rather than, I mean, the best justice you can give it is to do some oil, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, and then you know, something over the top to, to give it whatever gloss you want to go with. But, I mean, in terms of making the, the grain really pop in, in, I guess, you know, there's pop like for like guitars type, you know, you know, they use aniline dyes and stuff. But, and then there's, you know, natural pop. And, uh, this bird's eye is just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of other figure in there too. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that is wild. Got, love it. Yeah, he's got a yeah, music mechanism in there as well. So is it? Are they each boxes? They're, from what I understand, they're both boxes with a, a mechanism inside there. Sweet. So when they open it up, they start going. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Sweet. Wow. That's an intricate little piece here. Look I wonder how all the music boxes are. Um, first, mu first music box factory was opened in 1850. It doesn't have a date of for these here that I can see. Wow, what a fascinating oh, project. And Who is it that made this? Thing? I'm trying to remember. Uh, this is D uh, David Barton. He's David at Barton. Ch chiselandforge.com. Okay. I don't think I'm following him. I need to go find him. Yeah, Dave, well done, man. That is, I know I said it earlier, but that is absolutely beautiful. I love it. Lots of handwork. What, what a cool project. Lots there's, of handwork. It looks like. There's, there's a video here, too. I'll, I'll let you guys play that, though. So let's see what we have next here. You know, more pictures of the music box. Have I got this open place or what happened here? Okay, that was just another picture that he sent us. Um... And okay, we're back to NC Woodshop by uh, Sam Wax. And again, Fox is created by another member um, of the North 
country wood shop for his granddaughters. So I'll drop the link into Twitter here. There's, there's. What the, is the? Uh, I have not heard of North Country Wood Shop. Is this like a co-op or something? I don't know. Um, maybe Sam, you can tell us a little bit about. Give us some what more information, here. Sam. So here we see the doors that we were thinking that. Um, it's a, oh, it's a wood uh, shop that's open to the us. public. Really? Oh, nice. They and tried one of those in Asheville, and they had horrible hours, so they failed. It used to be one in Vancouver as well. I think they're still around, but they're expensive. They're open um, Monday 4 to 8, Tuesday to Friday 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Sunday noon to 5 p.m. And where, where, are, where they? are they? Minnesota. Minnesota. Hey, you guys, I'm going to have to bug out, but, man, it's these really nice pieces. I really like, uh, um, and uh, David uh, Barden, love, yeah. love, love that, uh, those books, and I, I understand the type of, type of uh, amount of time it takes to, to do that carving. I know Chris does, too, because Chris does a lot of uh, handwork, so uh, yeah. beautiful stuff. Really, really love it. Um, the uh, one, thing, one question I had on the, on the covers is that uh, like a, a, a home resaw veneer, or is that a, a manu manufactured veneer? So, question for you, Dave. The garden. If you can. So, Vic wants to know whether that's uh, shop sawn veneer that you used. I'm gonna guess it is. I don't think you can get that kind of uh, depth from um, commercial veneer. Some resin work? Regarding resin and regarding what? Resin. There was some resin work in there as well. Um, okay, so let's go back to that picture here. Oh, is it, are you talking about um, in the spine of the book? You talking about like for the uh, the you know the emblems or whatever you know up in? Can you use your mouse? Use, right in the spine. Uh, thing. Yeah, if you look on the spines, um, yeah. see the the big yeah. Right oh, there. okay. I think that's what he's talking about resin work, but I'm not positive. Is that what you're talking about, Dave? Yeah. I'm assuming. But anyway, guys, I, I got to go. Um, really appreciate uh, Hey, thanks for stopping by, Vic. It was good to have you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good I, to chat with you again, Vic. I'm glad you're back in the States. I'm glad you're feeling better, man. Thanks, man. Thanks. All right. Talk to you later. Yep. See you, Vic. Bye. Bye, Vic. Hey, guys, just a brief announcement. Yes. Uh, Listen in the spine. It's still there. Just just a brief announcement, but there there was a major event that recently happened that we – totally forgot to mention um, and it just kind of flew past us which is we've been doing what I call the wood chat reboot or the reboot of wood chat for over a year now um, Wow, really yeah the first transcript oh. of the rebooted wood chat was from November 2nd 2011 so oh, just over a year a just year over a year so a little bit of where's those where's that stupid uh, <laughs> <laughs> <a> stupid applause. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. So that's pretty cool. Um, that we've been must be taking you know, a bow. Missed a couple times, and I'm behind on posting the transcripts. But we've been able to do this for over a year, so that's great. Huh. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. So I appreciate everybody who participates and contributes and stuff. So. <laughs> All right. That wasn't the sound I was <laughs> thinking about. No. <laughs> I don't think you meant that for me, <laughs> weirdo. <laughs> I just saw myself on the screen, so, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, apparently you, you hired a stylist recently, apparently, right? Me? <laughs> yeah. Why with you say that? With the haircut and the, and the beard. You're looking, you're looking official. Huh? 
And you have a marketing no, just, person who hung up your sign. I, and... I, I, I live in Asheville, so I have to have a beard. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of it comes with the territory. Cool. Hey, Chris, I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting, but were there any more links we wanted to show? That was that was it. Okay, cool. That was the gamut. All right. Well, <laughs> shall we wrap it up, gentlemen? All right. Cool. Do not pay. Yes, sir. I got one. Do you, have you guys seen my wrapping jobs? You guys have to try this if you haven't already. Let's see it. Um, I I wrap my presents in a in a box oh, yeah. and then I put craft paper in them. I totally ripped I you off. Use my hand planes. <laughs> I, there I use hand to that? cut uh, thick, thick ribbons, <clears throat> wrap it around, and then make a bow with fine uh, shavings that are compressed underneath, inside the okay. throat as I produce them. Because you did that uh, last year for Christmas, right? I started two years ago. Or yeah, I remember you posted a picture around Christmas or something. I think I I did that for my wife yeah. for uh, for Mother's Day cool. or Christmas or something. But yeah, I love that idea. Is that just brown paper with a wood shaving ribbon? You bet. That's very cool. That's very cool. Um, okay, folks, let's wrap it up. So that is Wood Chat for uh, December 12th, 2012. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, wood Chat is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Remember that you can watch the video and see the uh, chat on one unified page over on uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chat room. Um, if you don't have a camera and a microphone, that's okay. You can participate in the text chat while you watch the video. We try to be pretty good about making sure that what happens in the text gets reflected in the video, and what happens in the video gets reflected in the text. So that's Wood Chat for tonight. I'm Matt Grattle from Uppercut Woodworks at Uppercut Wood uh, on Twitter. And uh, Chris, you want to say goodbye? And Scott, you want to say goodbye? I'll, I'll go first. I'll let Chris end. On behalf of everybody oh. at... All right, fine. <laughs> Go ahead, Scott. I'm Scott from scottmakewoodworks.com and uh, buy some planes and some plane classes for Christmas. <laughs> promote, 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 Chuck. <laughs> I'm Chris Wong of Flare Woodworks and Time Warp Toolworks and Scott meant for you to buy my planes. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Bye, both. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week. I don't make four cell phones. There you go. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a good uh, have yeah. a good week. We'll see you. We'll see you in a week for the next wood chat.